All right, traders, how's it going? So um, this next setup, I'm going to get into some tips and tricks here on speeding up your setup process inside of TradingView. Let me move the screen down a little bit here. I want you guys first and foremost to see the bottom login. You see it says TradeStation and there is a little green dot. Um, the, the beauty, and there's many reasons, several reasons why uh, TradingView, the use of TradingView and also our Futures Plus account is almost like a double revolver. Uh, holster because they kind of work hand in hand really good you know they're both web based first of all and secondly the cool thing is is you can integrate the data since TradeStation's already given us free data for at least for the CME bundle we can uh, there's API integration to different brokers um, I'm gonna log out and you can see and they keep adding more and more as they go but if you go and log into let's say paper trading for data right or something like that you're not gonna have live you're gonna have delayed CME data here. So the best way to get your free the data that you already have from TradeStation is hit connect here and just uh, log into your demo and stay in there. If you do live, it disconnects every now and then for your protection. And then what will happen is you may be looking at a market here, and um, once the market is open over here, you see it says market closed. Let me move this screen up a little bit more. You see when I touch this little deal here, market closed, it'll be like green and breathing or whatever. It will be delayed, and you may be looking at 10-minute delayed data. Okay, now, tra trading view sell data, which is not even worth worth it at all. Until you, then, I don't know where they got their pricing from. It's ridiculous. So let's move on into making sure that we have our data always there. Connect, demo, continue. Let me log into mine real quick. I'm gonna log in now. That's it. That's out of the way. I have my sim on, my sim trading on, and I can drop that down. As long as this little green light is on now and markets, you know, are active, I'm going to get the latest data that at least TradeStation is giving me through the API. So, boom, that's one killer thing right there for us. Another thing, um, you know what, let me pause this and expand this screen one moment here. Let's do it this way. All right, this should be a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to share. This is the first time I'm doing this. I'm unlocking um, a share link here for my workspace. I have the one hour and the four hour. Same kind of setup that we're using currently with our bread and butter strategy. So this is the bread and butter spread chart strategy. The link I'm going to... Uh, let me do this link I'm going to post it under this video this will be the first link I'll be sharing and this should be an active link to my charting now it's not going to be perfect I tried it on an incognito window and a couple of the indicators didn't pop in populate um, the theme if you want it dark you'll have to make it dark but it's going to still give you pretty much my setup here as good as possible and then you may have to add a couple things. So let's go through that. I'm going to put the, again, so this link here, it'll be a live link. So anytime I save something, I change and I save something here, um, you guys can probably get the latest workspace. I wish I could have done this in Futures Plus. Unfortunately, you have to build Futures Plus on your own. Or let me know if you need help on it. So this link will be the first one, and that's going to lead you to this. You may, again, have to change the background and some of the... Uh, some of these uh, plots like uh, for example um, the scaling and such like that but for the most part it'll be pretty identical okay that's that our next thing that I'm using and let's break it down this way let me pull up the one hour now um, I'm using my buddy Northstar day trading's trend finder okay he's a coder for pine script he, he makes all kind of um, a lot of day trading indicators because that's what he does okay um, him and his group do day trading on micros a lot um, but I like his moving average ribbon that he built it's free so the next indicator that I'm going to uh, put a link of is that and so um, it's a simple moving average ribbon the made the biggest one he has in there is a 100 moving average now I use it and I use it just to help me give a visualization of direction now um, I still have different setups inside of Future Plus, as you notice, so I have a couple mods to this. So this is just one for starters, but the thing is, is you cannot really modify his, if you go into the settings here, he has them um, already as set lines and there's no inputs, so I can't control and change those. So I just kind of have them there. So that's one to start because it kind of gives me a nice visualization again. I like moving average the ribbons. It's just I, I'm a visual guy on them. I like them. So I've adapted them into the system. So, but what I've done is I've added another indicator. And if you go to this link next, I'll 
guys, and remember, these things can change all the time. You can do things however you like. The cool thing about TradingView is there's so much free content on the social part of it. Uh, when you search for an indicator or whatever, um, there's public libraries of all kind of stuff for free. And you'd be surprised there's things that you would pay for at different company, different platforms, and you just get them here because somebody thought of it and was creative and shared it. Okay. So, um, so there's the five EMA. Now I added this indicator. This will be the next one I'll put in the line item down there. And the reason I topped it off on, um, North Star's trend finder is because, um, as you know, I like that eight EMA running on top of running with price. Now, if I bring that in and I go to the settings, I only have EMA, the first one checked off because it's five different EMAs, one, two, three, four, five. Now, normally if I didn't have trend finder, now I have my standard, um, exponential, uh, moving averages and they are set up to my inputs which are all like fib numbers see you have an 8 13 21 55 you know 100 so um you'll notice in future plus i skip the 13 because i like the gap in between the price and i go straight from 8 to 21 okay there's reasons why i just just work with me on this and you'll start seeing so but what i do again on this one i just want the eight and I just delete the other ones. I just uncheck them. They're not deleted. If you click on the color box, you can change it to whatever you want. I just like the big, thick white standing out in front of me. And I, uh, by default, a lot of these indicators are on one or two thickness. I set it to three. Again, if it bothers you, it looks retarded, just you know, set it down to a little hairline one and just keep it thin like that. Um, I keep mine thick. Okay, so uh, I'll go ahead and uh, okay. And if you like to save anything as uh, default for you, you can save it as default. You can always reset it to the original Pine script code that was created by the creator. Okay, so don't feel like you'll ever you're gonna break anything. You won't. You can't break it. You can always redo it, uninstall it, reinstall it, etc. So I'm just gonna stick with my uh, eight EMA there, just kind of flashing out like that. I got my trend finder there now. So that's how you turn them on and off. Um, a next thing that I have, and it's not for the bread and butter strategy, but I just want to mention it and I'm going to share that this gentleman here makes some amazing indicators. This guy's really good. And, um, he had for many, many, uh, over a year plus, I was using a dynamic support resistance line from him. He just created version two because I guess they changed some backend technology on, uh, trading view and so they have something called array and this thing is even more dynamic than before i always keep it because when i'm doing some analysis for uh, some of the commentaries like inside futures and bar chart uh, we're not necessarily showing the bread and butter strategy and let me show you here wh what i mean by that if i hop over to the my four hour time frame if you double left click i can make the any bottom indicator disappear and come back double left click to, to cr get that real estate bigger and then i erase my trends uh tools let's say and then i'll add my dynamic support resistance it's dynamic it's not static and it changes as price changes and your time frame has changed so um just looking here at a four hour you can clearly see how amazing this thing just printed out some dynamic support resistance lines and also price points, which you can go into his settings here and undo that if you don't like. You can change the coloring for support and uh, resistance lines to be different colors. I just have mine's your traditional green and red. So I have this here again when I'm doing different kind of analysis, high time frame, some kind of a commentary um, on some macro stuff. And we kind of want to look at things like that. Okay. So be mindful. I'm sharing it with you because I always keep it as an arsenal. I'm going to put that as a, another indicator. Okay. So let's go ahead now and undo all this. Put my trend finder back for my bread and butter strategy, my eight moving average. Close this down. Now let's go back to the uh, one hour. Okay. Now looking back at the one hour, in older version videos of um, our series, we've mentioned super trend, super trend. Okay. This super trend deal here. It's, I can't get too much in the technical of what it is, but it's another way of good confluence we can use. Okay. And I'm going to, again, I'll put the link in here. You should see the guy's name is scarf super trend 1.0 with alerts. What the alerts means you can set alerts inside trading view to alert your phone. Uh, another thing maybe we'll touch on that. Okay. So what this is doing is just, it's using an ATR based system to track price. Um, for day trading guys, be careful with it. 
It doesn't do a really good job at identifying sideways action. So it works really good on higher time frames because, um, you know, higher time frame is going to tend to trend more over the longer period of time, right? So it's just a way of confluence you can add um, just to, you know, top off when you're doing your analysis on a spread or even a future or a stock or whatever you guys are doing on the side out there. But in our case, in spreads and just kind of get an extra little bit of confluence where that trend is looking like okay again it's using an ATR uh, and stuff like that you got to research a little bit into it to learn about it if you're interested but I'm gonna add that link for the super trend and I don't keep it on full time but what I'm gonna do a, a bread and butter strategy analysis and I just want to get an extra little bit that extra little bit of confluence another little visual to give me that mind confidence for a direction then you know you can tap into that because in addition you have ADX anyway ADX is a good one and let's talk about that now this one I don't have a link to share because this is an actual built-in um, directional moving index so there's a DI plus and minus we'll break this down here let's see if we can go like this okay there we go so um, DI plus DI minus what is that it's obviously the red and the green line the red and the green line um, and basically this is the ADX line the yellow one okay now I've modded mine a little bit if you go here to indicators and strategies and you start typing directional moving index okay you can highlight the stars to keep them in your favorites so that way if you were just gonna drop down like this you can reference real quick to what you have and just and set up but um, the directional moving index is the red and the green line the DI plus minus when you get the standard one I think like this is orange so I've changed mine to red because I want you know red being selling um, instead of orange right and the ADX is generally um, uh, yellow or orange or whatever okay so um, now how does it kind of work here what is it implying so when we obviously our DI minus is on top of the DI plus it's it's letting us know that the short trend that the, the market is moving in a short trend at that time at that time frame the strength of the trend is determined by the ADX the ADX's strength is measured by a standard level of 20 and I believe some of you guys had questions about this keep everything standard standard numbers and anything under 20 and some people mod them and they use 18 and stuff don't get into too much modding leave things the way they are because other a lot of other people are looking at this and if they're looking at this it works based on how many people use this I talked to a programmer and he has about 20 different sets of um, automated algorithms for um, an institute that he subcontracts for and he uses ADX and a lot of his algos so try to keep things standard and what I mean now is with the 20 line, you know, um, let's go ahead now and break this down here. See if we can get. So one, once the if the ADX is under 20, usually the market is silent as far as trend direction. It is not moving in a direction. It is sideways, sideways action. See, a super trend is not going to tell me that. A super trend is just going to cup it like this. See, so it's not telling me we're going sideways. I'm sitting here assuming we're long on the super trend but it's it's because the ADX here is under in these levels here it's under 20 it's just sideways and chop and you can see that here um, there's no trend right when it pops and it's a little little lagging too but sometimes it's depending on what you're looking at in the time frame it's, it's pretty darn precise too and again higher time frame guys you're gonna do fine with this stuff but you see as the ADX finally went up above 18 19 20 line Let's see if I can draw here's our 20 somewhere around here if I can just that somewhere like that okay you'll see here as the ADX went up and is above the 20 line there is uh, the, oh the ADX is not telling us direction just by it moving up it's just a, a, like a uh, it's just a strength it's just giving us a number that there is a direction happening now we see obviously the green is on top of di plus okay so and you see price actually moves to the upside now here you see same deal um, ADX is starting to die off a little bit dying off dying off you can see the trend is coming to an end di minus goes up above on this four hour chart above the uh, di plus okay ADX picks up again boom super trend hits off 
and you have a strong downtrend okay now the eight moving average to me guys as far as entry is really uh you know look how price leans on and draw rides onto that eight ema when they pop up and they do pullbacks like this, I don't take them seriously until the whole body is over. Until we get a couple bodies of these candles completely over the 8 EMA, then we can get a sense of a directional shift like here. Okay. Now, these are not color-coded correctly because the super trend is overriding their color because of the bar color for the trend. So if I go in like this, and now you have your standard colors back in here, now you'll see when we picked up the Hikanashi and we built up a couple of green lines over that eight, this can be an indicator for you to get out early. You already see the ADX now doing that. The ADX has implied that to, to us. Okay. And, you know, that would have been an exit. Okay. Now, because we're still on the short side of our moving averages, you can say this could be a pullback or this would be an exit. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. You got to finesse your style. I would say the trend has changed. Now, if you're a little more aggressive, you could have went long that way because you just never know with these season. Uh, I'm sorry, with these um, spreads, they trend so much. They're like closer to forex over regular outright futures, so they can trend pretty hard. Their percentage level of trending is greater than outright. So we don't know if this was going to break out and continue long. Our super trend told us after a while, pretty late in the game. AEDX told us a little before, but we're still on the other side of that 100 moving average here, this 100 moving average. So really, to me, um, you know, it's an, it's, it's an aggressive stance to say you're long. It's a wiser choice to just get out of this short run that you already profited on. Um, same deal on the entries. It's going to give you a little early indication. So you got to understand how you want to play it. Do you want to get in once this big old candle prints over and that 100 moving average and turns red? Um, you see our 100 moving average on the trend finder from North Star Trading turns a different color as well when price prints under that 100. Um, so, you know, aggressive, we'd say selling into this when we're still really long i would be careful you see our adx did a good job at showing us that trend picked up though here and that strong candle went here and price went the adx went over 20 somewhere around here was already picking up we made a nice run down i mean what was that run worth well i can use a price calculator here i mean a, to measure i can use this measurement now, we did end up making an 18-point move in this grain spread, but the thing is, is realistically, did we know if we got that whole meat? Probably not. We probably waited till we got a candle up here somewhere like this. It's a 10-point game. So I'm being very conservative with my entries. I'm being very conservative with my exit as far as giving you guys a price idea. So we don't want to paint pretty picture and tell everybody, you know, hey, look at this move. This went from here all the way down here. 23 points, guys. You know, it's like this, like these liars on the internet. 23 points, it's $1,150. Of course, you can make $1,150 on spread. But in this particular move, I think realistically, by the time we got in, maybe somewhere around here and conservatively considered an exit, okay? If you guys study Hikanashi language too, you'll see that there's been some indecision candles here and stuff like that, but you don't know. We don't know what that is. We don't know if we're going to get a continuation. This is just a pullback like up here. We see that this pullback was, you know, you, you didn't get many candle and strong candle printing above and over that AEMA, another indecision candle and a continuation down, but then it happened again and this time they held it up. So uh, in this move, maybe potentially it was 10 points, you know, it's 500 bucks, you know what I mean? So that's kind of what I, uh, it, my strat is normally. Now we've reintroduced super trend back into the game for extra, just for like a little bit of extra because on trading view, we have it. Right, so on trading view, I like to I like to use it. I mean, why not? We have it, right? It's free. Uh, let's look at real quick here at this other trend here that happened. Um, you know, we see price moving under the eight EMA. If you were a little early and aggressive, you could have got in there short. Super trend told you it was picking a short up way over here, just identical to ADX. It got a little bit sideways, was losing a little bit of its momentum. But then it just took on off. I um, mean, you know, when it took off, it went. Um, and then it went sideways after that for a while. Um, our ADX was still showing a lot of strength. because, But for that ADX to finally lose its momentum, it took itself some time. Um, I guess just because it went down so quick. 
but you know that was a good move um you know, from there to this area of exit here, you could have said it was 36 points. 36 times 50 on grains, $1,800 move. And that move lasted us about, uh, um, ooh, 29th of June in this particular one to August 5th. Now, typical, you know, you see these spreads on these higher time frame, you know, midterm swings four weeks, five weeks, okay? So, if I got that right, excuse me if I didn't get the math right. Um, you know, and again, so we're kind of just, <clears throat> this is what we're doing generally. I, I kind of threw in some little quick uh, strategy on our bread and butter. But uh, use again, as you see, that eight moving averages really carries that price really well on these uh, Heiken Ashis. Now we're using again Heiken Ashi because, um, you know, hey, we like candles. Most traditional spread traders are using line on close um bars okay this is what a traditional spreaders would do let's build this real quick since we're here let me get rid of this let me get rid of this let me turn this into this and i might have one of these <laughs> here we go spread charts these are how spreaders trade and you know it makes sense look at it you know whatever but we tend to make things really fun so um, we've made it really fun and we've made them Heikinashis <laughs> because most of us have the day trader bug in us and we love Japanese candlesticks. The Heikinashis help us because our spreads sometimes are like little sprinkles if you put candles. They don't look really good. They, uh, they you know, because spreads, they get the gap, the gap. But we just were using them because we want to see the weight in the direction of the big money. The big money has a direction. They already know where they're going, why they're going there. That's their business. They already know that stuff. We just want to, uh, again, grab one of their coattails, as they call it, and run with it. So, um, was this my one hour? Let's put this back here. No, sorry. Make that our four. Make this one my one. And you can set these up however you guys like. Again, you can do so much of these. Just make sure you save it. Save anything that you um, have in progress. And so on okay so we've talked about you know, I've showed you all the different indicator links you know what we're kind of using here I've given you a link to my chart um, again if you want to get more real estate when you're not doing analysis with the uh, with 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 the ADX or any kind of indicators you guys have here on the bottom just double left click to make them appear reappear and uh, disappear okay like that save your chart and that is you know essentially trading view now you can save your favorite time frames up here you can customize that i mean by just pretty much anything that you put a star on inside trading view it's going to become a favorite same thing with drawing tools if you if you like to draw horizontal lines arrays you can star them up same thing with um you know uh tax boxes if you're writing notes and things like that and then you can pull them all up from your favorites bars here this down here this bottom left star and all the stuff you know um, if you want to use fib retracements and things like that or whatever they're all going to be in your favorites so and then you just can uncheck that unhighlight the star back at the bottom left and so again all your indicator based stuff you want to make favorites to star them up and it'll be compiled on this nice little shortcut list and some people keep them floating i don't like too many floaty stuff all over my charts because i like to just have it as clean as possible you know so um this is the setup for trading view again um the bread and butter strategy kind of again imitating kind of mirroring what we can what we're doing with it on futures plus okay um see here i believe i'm done with this session again if you need any help let me know this link should be linking you directly to my setup more plus or minus some of the indicators that's why i'm including the indicator um links and if you need to use other ones use other ones guys a uh, quick example you know look um here's a standard adx or direction dmi i've used the one that's built in in the from trading view because it's just so clean and simple we want to keep things clean but there are guys out there that make really, excuse me, really good other versions. I mean, you might like some of this stuff. 
where it looks like it, it you know, the, it paints a background for you too, to kind of like, so you don't even have to squint your eyes from far away. You can just standing there, see, you know, when it's, when, uh, it's basically the DI plus minus crossing over. This gentleman here has it to where the color changes in the background. There's all kind of creative stuff. Some guys have um, the same indicator as a histogram and things like that. So you're not uh, obviously obligated or anything to use um, what we have here. It's just a recommendation. And, you know, if you use it, you'll be able to see markets the way kind of we're the, the way that we're looking at. OK. Um, all right, guys. So. Go ahead and set up your um, trading view accounts. Make sure you do have spread uh, pro plus so you can put spreads on. Okay, see, in order to put on these spreads, pro plus is going to be um, a requirement from trading view. Um, in addition to that, obviously, they give you a bunch of other things, but you know, like I, I believe they'll let you make a lot more lists and have a lot more different alerts. Let's talk real quick about alerts. Let's say I'm on this four hour. Um, let's see here. If you go to these alerts, this is just a side side note here. I'm just kind of improving this as I go. Uh, if you want an alert on a specific chart, you have to make sure the time frame is all set up before you hit the alert button because it's going to pick that chart based on that market and that time frame. You cannot change that later. You'd have to create an alert all over again if you decided you were looking to do it on a one hour you'd have to build it out again and in here there are certain indicators that um, not everyone but almost 90 percent the professional guys that are writing pine script they will write their stuff with built-in alert coding so then you can set up for example let's say I just want to work with super trend and I want to lean on to super trend and I want to know anytime super trend on the four hour um, hits a uh, fires off a long or a short signal okay i mean super yeah super trend so i'll go off highlight off the four hour alert that's the spread kansas city wheat versus december uh chicago wheat on the four hour i'm going to pick from the condition the super trend alert and i want to know you would have to pick you have to, have to do this twice I want to know when super trend goes long. In this case, let's say it's long right now. I'm just going to set up a short one. I want to know when the super trend goes short. I'm going to say only once, alert me once. And I want the expiration to be as long as I can go. I believe with Pro Plus, it's going to highlight the longest I can go. I think it's 60 days or whatever. And I want to get notified on the app. And I want to be told that there's a super trend short on. KE versus ZW, and we'll even say four hour. So, Super Trend is firing off a short signal on Kansas City versus Chicago Wheat on the four hour time frame, and it's going to alert if you have the app downloaded on your phone. It's going to just alert on your phone like a text message via the Trading View app and tell you, hey, this thing just fired off. Come take a look. So this is another reason why it's very worthy. Trading view is very worthy because it's um, you know one web based, just like Futures Plus. So if you're out traveling around the world, something happens to your computer, um, you need to access a computer from a hotel room, and they have computer centers. You can access your Futures Plus account, your Trading View account, web based, and also they're both downloadable apps into your phone. So you can have those on your phone. And once you have that on your phone, your TradingView app, and you have an alert set up here, and you have told it to notify you on, on your app, you know, you can send it an email. You hit create. Maximum expiration is 60 days. Okay. Create. Okay, now it's going to say, warning, this alert will be based, it's on a spread, so it may be triggered a little differently than you expect. Because the tick data of price movements is we're using two legs. Whatever, that's fine. I don't care. They can warn me. Any, I don't care. We're swing trading here. We're not looking for every single tick, entry, whatever. So that's fine with me. Okay, that. And don't worry about it. And so when this thing fires a short signal, when it's when it decides to do it, like this one, it's going to alert my phone. I can look at my alerts here on the right side. And 
This one, I had something here stopped. I can delete it. And so this is my active one, you see? It's fired off. Once this fire is off, it will automatically pause itself because we told it to do it only once. So because it only does it once, um, it will pause itself and it'll look like this. It'll say, well, now it says stopped manually. It's a little different. They update this thing frequently. And all you got to do is hit the play button again. Once it fires off, for it to tell you the next time it's gonna it's short so in this case because this is uh two different signals we're in, looking for you're gonna have to set up another one uh, for example on this for your longs so, so if i want to lean in onto super trend one time but on the long side and you know in the same deal and leave your notes and you create this and it's going to hold in here okay now um and, and and you can do that time and time again with different stuff okay if you want to set up something with your dmi when the adx when di plus crosses di minus there you go here's one there you go okay so you can do it uh, dmi based okay whenever you know di plus crosses di minus on the four hour spread here i want to know okay it will alert me once that price bar or whatever that area closes okay so um, these things sometimes are known to repaint but on higher time frame like this it's not too much concern if for day traders that is you know in short time frame indicators on trading view can repaint so you're going to get multiple you, if you have it set at multiple alerts it can repaint in other words it might um, in, until that candle closes it'll fire off and then it might end up closing the other way if you're a day trader you know what I'm talking about and so it could tend to give you an alert when it isn't really complete so it depends how you set your alerts and again don't worry guys if you're not day trading it's not too much of a concern okay so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete these out that's how you set your alerts um, again if the indicator has the coding ready to be alerted on some indicators the guys aren't aren't good enough Used for the current symbol has been moved to this tab. Oh, okay. So, um, again, some of these guys, they're still rookies out there, and they don't have the skill to set alerts on these indicators, so you just won't have it available. So don't question, hey, where the heck? I downloaded this indicator um, that I really like, and I want to set an alert for it. It may not have it. If the person didn't code it to do alerts, it will not have it in here, and you'll know. Okay, so, um, you know, you can see even our support resistance guy, has uh, set up to where I guess with price closes above or under any one of his uh, lines. Um, let's see, shapes, crossing, support. I'm just playing around with this here, guys. Anyway, whatever. So, all right, so that's that. Um, let's see, that's our trading view setup, guys and gals. And good luck with your setup. Have fun. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, we'll see you back in the trade room.